We've all heard the expression, man, I just need a week of Saturdays. If I had a week of Saturdays, there's so much I could do with my family, with my kids. I could get more involved at church. I could get more involved with different ministry programs. There's, there's so much I could do for God and family if I had a week of Saturdays. Well, today we're going to be looking at how you can have not just a week of Saturdays, but how you can have two months of Saturdays per year for God and family. One of my favorite quotes is, Ordinary people think merely of spending time. Great people think of how to use it. Is that you? Are you desiring, do you think about how can I serve God more? How can I serve my family more? How can I do more that will count for eternity? If that is you, then stick along with us today and participate because we're going to go through several steps that I use in my own life and that have enabled me to to serve in ministry, to give more, and to do a lot more for God that I would not have been able to do otherwise. And today we're going to look at steps that you can take starting today. And at the end of this week, you'll find you'll already be getting more time for God and family. If you're serious about serving God and family, and you want to participate, I want you to pause this video, grab several sheets of paper and something to write with, and then come back and we'll get started. Well, all right, we're ready to start. If you have your pieces of paper, just get one piece of paper, and I want you to do several things. First of all, draw a line down the middle and divide it into two columns. Label one side family or self, Label one side family or self, and the other God slash ministry. All right, once you've done that, now I want you to pause the video and take a moment, and each of those columns, I want you to write the top 10 things that just automatically come to your mind, the top 10 things that you want to do in both the area of family or self or God in ministry. So just write down the top 10 things, whether it's you want to help out at the church more. You want to be involved. You want to go and witnessing. You want to have more personal time with God. You want to spend more time with your kids. You want to maybe learn some new skill. You want to spend more time with your spouse. Whatever it is, whatever, just write down some of the top 10 things you want to do in each of those areas. Uh, no particular order again, but just brainstorm. So pause the video, take a moment, and write those down, and we'll get, and we'll keep on going. Okay, now for each of those columns where you've written out what you'd like to do, I want you to number the top three in each of the columns. So then just prioritize the top three. What is the number one thing you'd like to do, the second most important, and the third most important thing you'd like to do in family or self, and also in God and ministry? So just label those real quick, number one, number two, number three. Do it in both of those. Now at the top of this paper, I want you to label it general list. This is your general list. It, it has the big picture of what you'd like to do. Now we're only going to be focusing on uh, the top three, but you also want to keep this general list in the back of your mind. You might be able to nickel and dime some of these projects along the way. But generally, what we want to do is we want to focus on the top three in both of the columns, but we'll also keep the others in mind. So label it general list. Now I want you to get a second sheet of paper. And I want you to, again, divide it down the middle, most of the way, but divide it into three sections. Leave a space at the bottom. And again, label the left column, family self, the right column, God and ministry. And we'll just leave the blank um, space at the bottom empty for now. But then in the two top columns, I want you to write out the top three things that you identified from your general list. Leave us good space between them, space them out evenly, but write the top three items from both columns from your general list. And once you've done that, label this sheet short list. All right, the short list is where you spend most of your time and energy. You may have your general list in the back of your mind that you may be thinking of, and you might work on it here and there a little bit. But your short list is the most important thing to you. 
It's what's going to get most of your time. It's what's going to get most of your energy. It's what's going to get most of your focus. And that's why we keep it a short list. We don't, we're not going to fill it up with everything. We want to fill it on just what you can potentially do just by, uh, within the scope of that short list. So the top three things you want to do for family and yourself and the top three things you want to do for God in ministry. That is your short list. Well, before we can go further, we really need to understand time. What is time? How do we, how do we use time? What is time made up with? And once we understand that, then we'll be able to better understand how to fit our short list into our time. So I want you to grab another sheet of paper and draw a big circle on it. Now we all know that there are 24 hours in a day, so label this 24 hour day. Well now we want to divide this circle into 24 segments. So divide the circle in half, divide it in half again, divide those portions in half, and then divide those portions into thirds. And so now we have our day divided into 24 segments. Now, first of all, we're going to mark down the time that we sleep and eat. And this is the time that is a given. It's the time that's always going to be consumed every single day. There's nothing we can really do about it uh, unless we're a uh, fasting insomniac. Um, generally, we're going to be spending about the same amount of time every single day for the rest of our lives eating and sleeping. And so I want you to take the first 12 hours um, and just mark, well, we'll mark eight of them Z for sleeping and then mark the rest of them within that 12 period life. And the reason we do that is because generally every single day you're going to spend on average 12 hours just in the items that are given, the, the sleeping, the eating, the getting dressed, the meal prep, the basic hygiene. It's the things that you will have to do every single day. And those are, those are a given. Those are already accounted for. We can't change those. So already half of our day is already accounted for. In John eleven nine, 9, Jesus Christ, the one who created a 24 hour day, he told his disciples that there are 12 effective hours in a day, recognizing that on average the other 12 are already accounted for. It's a given that you're going to be sleeping and eating and spending X amount of hours every single day doing that. So once we've taken out what's given, everyone generally has 12 hours in a day. Now this is one of the most important concepts that you need to grasp to make best use of your time, to give more time for um, activities for family, for God, for ministry. This is very important. Most people think of their day in a 24-hour period. Jesus says we need to think of our time in 12-hour segments because generally we have half the time that we think we do. And that's where a lot of people make the mistake. They think, well, I have 24 hours a day. I can afford to waste some of them. Whereas what we're going to look at today is you really only have 12 hours in a day and we need to make every single hour count. That doesn't mean we're going to be workaholics. I mean, we're still going to be able to take time for rest and play and fun and everything. But we do need to mentally think that we don't have a 24-hour day. We really have a 12-hour day. And... Really, our whole life is defined by what we do with half of our time. You know, half, half of our life, we're going to be sleeping and eating. That's a given. That's, that's already on the, the accounting book, so to speak. It's a given. What we do with the other half counts for eternity. And so that's what we're going to look at today. The best use of our 12-hour waking day is what I like to call it. The, the amount of time that we actually have to ourselves. Okay, so looking back at our time chart again of 24 hours, most of us work. I, you know, I work too. I have to go to work. Um, but So we need to mark how many hours we work and just write a W in those, those spots, but then also account for commute time because that does obviously take up your time. 
So write down a total work time, how much time you spend involved with work. So your work hours, time you have to commute, um, that is going to be your, how many, and as you look at it, if you have a regular job, you're probably going to allocate about nine hours a day to work on average, again, on average. And that's, that's pretty generous with the commute time too. Now we're also going to count that on average throughout the week, you spend an hour a day on chores. So write in one of the blanks, chores. You know, that's fixing things that come up that are aside from your regular everyday tasks. You know, you may change your oil or you have to fix the screen door or, you know, just little chores that come up throughout the week that you're only really going to do once. And you may only do it once a year, you may do it once a month. But every day you, you do a little bit of something. So we're going to we're going to be generous and allocate just an hour for that chores, you know, peppered throughout the day. Now we're also going to be generous and we're going to account that on average throughout the week. You spend an hour's worth a day with your spouse, your children, or your friends. You know, an hour a day, again, spread across the day. But cumulatively, you spend an hour socializing, just sitting with your spouse, talking with them, or with your friends. Um, we're just going to tack that in there because um, you should be doing that. All right. Now, these charts do not reflect specific tasks that you may have that might be particular to you. For example, um, taking care of tasks on the homestead, uh, feeding livestock, you know, things that fit outside the average person's time schedule. What we're looking at is just a general time schedule and generalized tasks. Your, re your results will vary. Okay, well looking at our chart again, we have on average one hour's worth of unplanned free time each day. Now we may not get it all in one chunk, and remember though we were very generous with our estimates in other areas such as chores and commuting. Most people can have up to two to three hours of free time a day, easily. Um, so on average, you're going to have five hours Monday through Friday that can be considered unscheduled. I mean, you, you can easily find things to fill it up with, but it's usually five hours within the work day, we, uh, within the working days, that not to consider it disposable, but you could give or take and, and do what you want with it generally. Now for married individuals, we can say five hours free time at a minimum. And for singles, we could say at a minimum again, 10 hours free day, free time during the weekdays. Now, the time chart, the, t the whole time calculations that we're looking at do not take into account your day of rest because that's a day of rest so whatever day you take that on um, rest on that day spend time with your family you know go on a picnic go swimming uh, you know play with your kids um, obviously go spend time with the church and, and spend time with God but uh, we're not including your day of rest in in our time calculation so we're really calculating for just six days that you have to work and do something whether that's physical or mental for God and family. Now, as we add up our, our time, we'll see that for a single person, you're going to have about 10 hours of free time um, on a weekend. If you're married, you're going to have around eight hours of uh, free time on your weekend. So now for a total, not including the day of rest, Singles will generally have about 20 hours a week um, free time, and married you're going to have about 10 hours a week free. Now again, your, your mileage will vary. Um, these are minimum rough estimates. Uh, you will usually have more time than that. Now sometime, uh, some other time when you have uh, a chance, <laughs> when you have some time, uh, I would suggest you make a 12-hour chart for every single day. Uh, during your six day week and just chart it out break it down to even half hour segments and just 
chart out what do I do regularly every day where does my time go and when you can chart it all out and look at your time and you have a good idea of where your free segments are they'll give you a whole lot better of how give you a better idea of how you can use your time where your time's going or maybe you could shuffle some things around too so I'd highly suggest you do that when you get a chance now then let's just park right here for a minute and talk about children you know, so far our time figures have been for adults who have to go to work. Well, generally, if you do the time chart for children, you know, even taking into account school, even homeschool, children will generally have twice as much free time than a single adult. So whereas a single adult would have 20 free hours during the week, a, a young person will generally have about 40 hours of free time during the week which is very important because young people need to realize that they need to give the strength of their youth to God because you know as as we grow up we have to go to work we have family obligations we have things we have to do the amount of time that we have is shortened so that's why the Bible says for unto whosoever much is given of him shall be much required Luke 12:48 and Ecclesiastes 12 1 says remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth the best time to serve God is when you are young and you don't have as many restraints on your time so now why you don't have a job why why you're not married you know why you have free time now is the time to ask God God what do you want me to do for you how can I serve you more what can I do so now is the time to serve God in the days of your youth Okay, so we've looked at our time in general, we've looked at where most of our time goes, and now we've boiled it down to, at a minimum, the free time that most people have. Well, now we need to look at where does all that free time go? You know, I know we have free time, but where does it go? Well, chances are that if you're still watching this and you're still staying with us and you're participating, that you are serious about serving God and you really want more time to serve God, to invest in your family, to invest in your own personal life, you are serious. And I appreciate that. And so we're going to be pretty straight with you and we're going to frankly look at what are some stumbling blocks that come up in our life that rob us of our free time and of our ability to serve God and family. So let's look at them. Now these are not statistical figures per se, but they are based on my observation and they're a very conservative and minimum um, estimate based on my observations of different people and just different lifestyles and, and even my own life. You know, the, the things that we're going to cover, I had to look at in my life too. So, but again, they are low and very conservative figures. Um, generally, and you'll probably pick this up right away, generally you'll observe that these stumbling blocks are more prevalent in people's lives than I'm going to be listing, but I'm listing a minimum. So let's look at them. Firstly, the largest stumbling block is movies, DVDs, and internet video. Without a doubt, this is one of the largest items that robs us of our free time. Typically, the average American, again, not based on statistical figures, but the average American will spend a minimum of one to two hours every day just with this activity. You know, even if one watches a movie every other day, by the time you average that out, that's still an hour a day. Um, and secondly, separate from movies is TV shows. And generally, those are half the time as a movie, but generally, they, they come up pretty close as robbing people's time and at a minimum these will consume half hour of someone's time per day and as you could probably tell these are ultra conservative this is almost the bare minimum uh, figures you can get news is another item that robs people's time it generally takes a half hour but with all the commercials and really the fluff that are in news, you are losing time by the fistfuls. You know, my degree is in advertising and public relations. 
you know, the, the news that you see on TV is really not meant to be informative. It's meant to get your attention on the commercials. That's really all the news is for. Another area is YouTube, our internet video that people just watch for fun. Sports media, that's, that can quickly consume hours of your week too as well. Social media, and another large, large area that's more particular to young people, but I've seen even um, young adults and even college graduates and young families get involved in this, are video games, computer games, and handheld games slash apps. You know, games on your um, various devices, uh, Android uh, or your iPad or games games and the multitude of forms that they they appear in quickly take up a lot of time now you may say well I don't I really don't spend that much time on games well all you have to do is spend 10 minutes on a game another 10 minutes on a game and another 10 minutes on a game in a day and you've easily spent a half hour right there so it it adds up and that's what these figures are they're they're cumulative now, I want to park here for just a minute. Computer games, video games, console games, uh, device games, they are going to be the largest uh, thief of your time, really. And what we need to consider and what we, the way we need to think about games, computer games, I'm not talking about the violent games. I'm talking about computer games in general. I don't, you know, I don't care if it's Pac-Man. It's robbing your time and giving you nothing in return. What we need to think of computer games or video games, any type of games like that, we need to think of them as a bag with holes. You are pouring your time, your energy, your zeal, your enthusiasm, and your money into it, and you're getting nothing in return. You're not even getting the ones and zeros that the video game's made out of. It's a bag with holes. And unfortunately, yeah, uh, unfortunately, a lot of young people and young adults, too, are pouring their time into an activity which gives them nothing in return. Now let's just total up some of this. Let's be conservative and total the following for an adult day. Now let's say the average adult consumes video whether it's DVD, internet, video, news, or TV show, let's say at a minimum they only consume one hour of video a day. And let's say they play total a day, only a half hour. You know, that's 10 minutes here, that's 10 minutes there, that's 10 minutes there. You know, that, that goes quickly. So a half hour for apps and games. Let's say they spend 25 or a quarter quarter of an hour on YouTube and social media and then maybe if you throw in a movie a week um, by the time you average that out that's about a quarter of an hour again spread across every single day so on average the average American adult is going to be spending two hours a day on bags with holes you know you don't get your TV time back you know it it doesn't count for anything. Video games, you don't get anything back for that. I mean, most people are spending their time on bags with holes that they put stuff in. They put their life into something, and they never get their life back. You know, people say, well, it's a free game. I got this free game for my device or, or this computer game, whether it's free. No, it's not free. It costs you your life. It's taking your life. Okay, let's look at a young person then. A young person will generally consume, between movies or TV episodes, whatnot, about two hours a day. And games, they could easily spend uh, two hours a day again. And you throw in some app games even on top of that, things they play in the car just on different devices. You know, again, a conservative estimate of half an hour. There, a young person can easily rack up four and a half hours on bags with holes. 
Now, it's hard to put a figure on these, so I'm just going to list them, but other activities that can consume our time are uh, sports organizations, uh, civics organizations, um, different volunteer organizations, hobbies. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be involved in certain civic activities. Now, you should be involved uh, in your community. You should be involved in your civil government, in your local area there. But there's some activities that we get involved with uh, that we really don't need to be involved with, and they go on fine without us, and there's really no benefit for us to be in them. So we do need to evaluate those and recognize that sometimes we don't need to be a part of activities and organizations and associations because they're, and the net result is that they're taking our time. We're not, we're not getting any benefit from them. So our next step that we're going to do, our next activity, is I want you to get another piece of paper and label this at the top, bags with holes, or if you want to label it, stumbling blocks. What we're going to do is we're going to list the stumbling blocks or the bags with holes that very often we put in front of ourselves as we're trying to go forward and serve God and family. Unfortunately, we, we are the ones who end up putting these activities in front of ourselves. So what we need to do is we need to identify what stumbling blocks are in front of me, what's keeping me from serving God and family uh, the way I want to. You know, when we look at our short list and say, you know, this is what I want to do, what is getting in between me and being able to accomplish that? So I want you to pause this video again, and I want you to just take a moment and just be honest with yourself and say, what are some stumbling blocks that I have in my life that are keeping me from doing what's on my short list? I want you to be totally honest with yourself. I want you to ask your spouse, your children, your parents to honestly tell you how much time they think you spend on it each day. You know, if you have game consoles, usually you can go into them and it can tell you how much time you've given it during the week. Now, there was a time that I had to do this myself. And I had to write down the stumbling blocks that were in my life that kept me from doing a lot that I wanted to do for God. So I'm not asking you to do something that I haven't done. So I just want you to take a moment, pause this video, and again, be honest with yourself. And just write down the stumbling blocks that are in your life that are keeping you from doing what's on your short list. Okay, now that you've written out your list of stumbling blocks, I want you to get your list of stumbling blocks, and I want you to get your list, your short list, and put them side by side. Now I want you to compare the two. I want you to see what is more important to you while I read 2 Timothy 2, 20 through 21. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Look at your short list. The list of every good work. Are you prepared unto every good work? Are you meet for the master's use? If not, what needs to be purged? I just want to get a little transparent with you here. About 10 years ago, I had to write this very same list myself. And I had to ask myself these very same questions. And I had to examine the stumbling blocks that had to be removed from my life. You see, I spent, you know, even after I graduated from college, I, I spent hours every day playing computer games. And that's one reason why I'm against them so much. I would, I would spend hours a day, which by the end of the week, I was easily spending days worth of waking hours per week on bags with holes. 
Those are hours and days that I will never get back. But it was when I examined the matter and wrote it down and said, you know what, this is keeping me from serving God, from going forward. That's time that I could be investing in eternity, and instead I'm investing it in nothing. It's costing me my life, this activity, and I'm getting nothing in return. Are you serious about removing the stumbling blocks in your life that are pre preventing you from serving God and family more? That is what we're looking at today, and I hope you're serious because we're about to look at steps that we can take to accomplish what we want to do. On your short list at the section at the bottom, I, we're going to create a checklist. Now, I don't know what your checklist will entail, but I will throw out a few ideas. I want you to write down, uh, first of all, we are going to identify stumbling blocks that need to be removed. And I would suggest, from my observation, it's, it's true for most people, is the very first thing you need to do is delete all computer games and gaming apps from your devices. I'm going to say that again. Delete all computer games and apps from devices. This even includes Solitaire, Minesweeper, the games that came with your computer. You delete them all. Now, I'm going to list several more, and then I'm going to address one of the largest objections that uh, you're, you're probably already running into right now. <laughs> So just keep writing down, and in a few moments we'll get to it. Secondly, what you have to do is throw those game discs away. Throw them away. Don't keep them. Don't keep them for another day. Don't give them to somebody else. Throw them away. You have to burn that bridge. And going with that, throw all movies away. Now even the the movies that you consider, you know, this is this ain't a bad movie. This is just a good family movie even. You know, I would suggest you you throw that one away too. Um, mainly because what is a movie? You say, well it's it's not that long. But how many times have you watched it? How many times are you gonna watch it in the future? You know, over the course of that movie's life, you're going to give probably a whole waking day to it easily. Not to, not to include the time of your child's life, not to count the time of your friend's life that you're giving to that little movie. Throw them away. You know, you don't need to suck your life into a VCR or a DVD player. Just throw it away. You have to burn the bridge that is keeping you from going forward for God. You, if you, you're probably saying, I want to go forward for God, but we're being sucked backwards by this black hole of time, this black, this bag of holes that we keep holding on to. Until you get rid of it, you're going to have a very hard time going forward. And we'll get to that here uh, pretty soon too. Also, cancel subscriptions. Whether it's cable, Netflix, or other video or media services like that. Anything that is just pouring media into your life and demands your time but gives you nothing in return, cancel it. Get rid of it. You'll save time. You'll save money. You'll get closer to your spouse and kids. Um, why, why do you keep it? If you are serious about what's on your short list, doing something for God and family, why not get rid of it? You know, a lot of people say, Oh, Brother Dan, what are you, you're asking me to sacrifice a lot here. Hello, look, I spent money on this. I'm spending money on this. You know, we, we even watch this stuff together as a family. I want you to look at your two lists again. Look at your list of stumbling blocks. Look at your list of what you want to do for family and God. 
which one one of those you are going to have to sacrifice you're going to have to sacrifice either your the time with family and god for a bag with holes or you can give up your bag with holes to have time with family and god you will be sacrificing one of them you can't hold on to both of them now when i started mentioning these things i can almost guarantee you that Satan brought up some questions in your mind right away. As soon as I started saying you need to throw things away, his first question to you was, you're not really going to throw that away. I think of all the money you spent on it. <laughs> I mean, throw it away. No, you want to throw it away. That's wasting it. You spent all that money on it. Well, you're going to be wasting more of your life on it, too, if you hold on to it. But let's look at a Bible example. And then I think you'll find the answer to his questions. Second Chronicles 25, 5-9 through nine says, Moreover, Amaziah gathered Judah together and made them captains over thousands and captains over hundreds, according to the houses of their fathers throughout all Judah and Benjamin. And he numbered them from twenty years old and above, and found them three hundred thousand choice men able to go to war that could handle spear and shield. He hired also an hundred thousand mighty men of valor out of Israel for an hundred talents of silver. But there came a man of God to him, saying, O king, let not the army of Israel go with thee, for the Lord is not with Israel, to wit with all the children of Ephraim. But if thou wilt go, do it, be strong for the battle. God shall make thee fall before the enemy. For God hath power to help and to cast down. And Amaziah said to the man of God, But what shall we do for the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel? You see, here's the king. You know, he hired um, this, these uh, army for hire, basically, and he spent a hundred talents of silver. That, you know, in the dollar equivalent, that's, that's over $600,000. And now this prophet is coming to him and says, forget about it. The king's saying, you know, what am I going to do about this money I spent? I still have the receipt, you know. What? You're telling me to forget about $600,000? Well, that's the same question a lot of people have when we tell them, you know, there are some things you need to get rid of. Their first objection is, but what about all the money I've spent on this? Well, let's look at what the man of God replied to him. And the man of God answered, the Lord is able to give thee much more than this. You see, we get our eyes focused on the money and say, look, at, oh, I spent a lot of money on this whole collection of, of videos and games and movies. You're asking me to throw it away? Yeah. Because God can do so much more in your life if you let Him. But if you're going to limit him and say, well, no, I'd, I'd rather have this bag with holes. You're robbing yourself. Do what's right. Remove those stumbling blocks from your life. And God can do so much more than you can even comprehend. Okay, let's look at just a few more uh, stumbling blocks. As we look on our list, um, again, depending on your situation, Another good suggestion is make it physically harder to use your TV. Yes, you may watch it for educational purposes. You may use it in your schoolwork. You may uh, check it for weather every now and then or whatnot. But physically make it harder to use your TV. The easier it is for you to just turn it on, the quicker it is going to be for you to waste your time. And along with that, Look around your living room area or the area where you will generally be most of the time. That includes your whole family. Where, wherever you spend the most time, look around that area and look for push 
button stumbling blocks. No, uh, that's what a TV is. You're one button pushed away from having a stumbling block in your life. A video game or computer games are generally one button push away from doing what God could do in your life, in your fam's and family's life. Look for push button stumbling blocks. Also, other suggestions, we mentioned it before, but cut back and um, get involved less with unnecessary club or organization activities. And also limit your social media access. Allocate a certain amount of time to it and just say, you know, I'm just going to do what's important. I'm not going to just sit and read what everyone's had for dinner because that really doesn't matter and who cares anyway. Just, you know, touch base with the friends that you need to on about important matters. Just allocate about 15 minutes every day to do that. Then get off. <laughs> get off the computer. Spend time with your kids, your spouse, your friends. Uh, spend time with God. Okay, another major area that you could put on your checklist is identify alternatives. We've already identified stumbling blocks. Let's all identify some alternatives. In other words, instead of organized sports or watching sports, why people spend their life watching other people enjoy their life? I'll never get that. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll watch TV sports for hours when the people on the TV are having fun. You're not. Um, that just blows my mind. So instead of organized sports or even just trucking your family all over your community to go to all sorts of organized sports, just limit your sports to family sports, uh, sports with friends, with your brothers and sisters in Christ at church. You know, don't get involved in organized activity, which is going to start organizing itself into your life. It's going to start robbing your life. Um, just limit your sports to friends and family. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with sports until it becomes organized and starts taking your life. So, look for ways to unorganize sports. And, and news. Uh, new, again, like I said, newspaper and even newscasts on TV, it's really not a very efficient way to get news. So look for a source of internet news that you can just read quickly. Or look for a Christian source of news, one that gives you a, a Christian perspective on it. You know, a lot of Christians, they'll turn to the worldly news um, outlets, and then they end up with the same secular and humanist conclusions that the news anchors provide them with. So... I look for internet news because generally in five minutes you could learn more than you would in half hour watching a TV show or even reading the newspaper. So that's another alternative. And in general, look for time savers versus time wasters. And that goes down to the things you buy, the activities you get involved with. Um, look for things that truly save you time. Don't get into the trap of buying things that claim they will save you time just because something may save you time doesn't mean it gives you time. Look for things that will generally give you time. A lot of people buy things that are labeled convenience out, uh, convenience items, but then they have to go to work and work extra hours to be able to pay for it. So they end, end results in net loss. They, they never gained anything anyway. So look for time savers versus time wasters. And some extra helpers, uh, just some extra tips. Stay organized. Have checklists. Again, with your general list and your short list, start getting detailed of how you're going to accomplish those. Uh, have lists of what your family is supposed to do throughout the week, the chores the children are supposed to do. Stay organized. Keep your house clean. Have the tools where they're supposed to be. The less time you have to run and fumble around trying to find things, the more efficient you'll be. So stay organized and have checklists. Try to stay healthy. Eat right. You know, you may say, well, this is going to cost me a little bit more because I have, you know, I have to pay more for fruits and vegetables. The healthier you are, the less downtime you will have. And I see a lot of people who say, well, I'll eat the way I want to eat now. But then very quickly in their life, it catches up with them and they suffer a larger downtime for a good portion of their life because they weren't prudent their stewardship of their life early on. So stay healthy, 
have take your vitamins, take different supplements, herbs, learn about how to stay healthy, have regular exercise, and that will give you more uptime, healthier time that you're able to do things, to spend time with family, spend time with God. You're able to do a whole lot more when you're healthy. Okay, we have identified a number of stumbling blocks and activities, and we've looked at different tips that could help us. Now, if you're serious about serving God and having more time for family and self, then the sooner you implement this checklist and remove them, the sooner you'll be able to jump into what's on your short list. You know, some people look at their short list and say, well, you know, these are things I want to do for God, but whew, some of these, that's, that's a that's a big item there. You know, I don't, I don't know if even with freeing up some of my time, if I'll be able to do this. I want to get, you know, I've been able to do some incredible things for God that if I had known when I started them what they were going to turn out to be, I would have, I would have put up resistance. I would have said there's no way I'd be able to do that. But it's because I nickel and dimed it. I did a little bit at a time that is able to accomplish great things for God that went far beyond what I imagined. And it was like the man of God who told uh, the king, he said, you know, God can give you so much more than this. When we give God what little bit we have, he can multiply it. You know, someone asked me once, he said, how do you eat a whale? I, uh, I don't know, I've never done that before. He said, well, you eat a whale, one bite at a time. And you may look at your short list and say, well, I, you know, some of these projects are pretty big. But if you accomplish it a little bit at a time, one bite at a time, pretty soon you'll find that you're taking some pretty big chunks out of your whale. And just from the stumbling blocks and the items we looked at, just the time charts and all today, you can easily free up two hours every single day. You know, with, with very little strain, actually. Replace your bags with holes with doing something for God. Start biting down on that whale and get, allocate two hours every day. You may not be able to get it all in one two-hour chunk. You may have to do it in four half-hour segments. But if, again, if you nickel and dime it two hours every day over the period of six days, you know, we're not counting, counting your day of rest here. You're going to find by the end of that week you will have spent 12 waking hours per week on your short list doing something for God and family. And when we look back at our time charts, 12 hours is a whole waking day. So if every single week you can give God or family a whole day's worth of time, that means each month you're giving God on average about five days whole days a month. Well, five days a month times 12 months, that's 60 waking days per year. And hence, you have two months of Saturdays for God and family. Now, if you look at your list of stumbling blocks and your short list, one of those two is going to get that two months of Saturdays. It's going to be the one that you give it to. Are you going to give your time to a bag with holes? Or are you going to give it to God and family to count for eternity? The choice is yours. Do you want to hold on to a bag with holes? Or do you want to see the Lord do much more than this? He can, if you'll let Him. If you've made the decision to serve God, go forward and remove the stumbling blocks out of your life. If you made the decision to serve God and give more time to Him, to your family, to uh, even bettering yourself. I want you to write me and let me know. You know, I, that will make it more concrete too. But write me and let me know, what is your short list? What do you want to do for God? What are the steps that you are taking for God? You, know, you can write me at info at artoflogic.org or P.O. Box 403, Shelby, Alabama, Three five one four three. I would love to hear how you have made a decision to serve God and to better serve your family too. Well, we've covered a lot today. 
but I want you to be strong. I want you to be of good courage. I want you to do it. And we'll see you next time. Maranatha. Thank you.